Good morning, everyone. This is Chris Gantz with JHB Group. I've got Deb Harrison here, um, our strategic engagement manager, along with Ksenia Kush, who is our operations manager here at JHB Group. We want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us on this uh, great morning. Um, real quick, a little background on JHB Group. Um, we're kind of a little different in terms of a DNA of our company. Um, I, myself and a bunch of our guys here are retired uh, firefighters um, from the Chicago area. So <clears throat> we're coming at this with a little different perspective. Uh, the assets that we build and the innovation that we kind of continue to develop um, come from a little bit more real world experience, a little more common sense, which doesn't always happen in public safety, um, trying to make things just better, um, doing things a little simpler, a little smarter, and a little safer, but also more effective. Um, we're going to talk about a couple things today. You know, we talk about some of the cool things we're working on. I just wanted to share um, one of the key things that we're doing is um, in our mobile platforms is the ability to have um, just do things a little bit smarter, um, a little more efficient. So I just wanted to share, you know, one of the things that we've worked on recently is a new uh, hybrid vehicle called a prehab rehab command. Um, it emerges the capabilities of a traditional command unit, but along with uh, prehab and rehab for different incidents. So it allows for both um, heating, cooling, um, dressing for like hazmat, for dive rescue. We have decon showers for the exterior, um, beverage stations. You'll even notice on the, the drawing in front of you guys is a uh, rear beverage porch, as we call it. Um, one of the things that always happens right in these commands is that people are always coming in and out just to get a cup of coffee or you know, a cookie or something like that on an incident, um, and it's pretty disruptive. Um, so what we've done is actually move everything to the rear of the trailer where we can then have um, uh, people get the necessary beverage items and never have to go inside to disrupt what's going on on the interior. If it's from command functions and meeting, um, even to just people taking a break, right? You're on a long-term incident, they need to take a quick snooze, they need to uh, have a mental break. It's one of those, you know, they're out there doing an investigation for a long period of time or whatever it might be. So we kind of built that in. That unit does allow for rehab with heated seats um, on the benches for those cold months, um, but also allows for removable tables. So you can actually have a meeting or conference style um, and have that flexibility. Um, you know, a couple things we only build, we only build aluminum and we only build two sizes. Um, we build a small and a medium. We don't build anything over 30 feet because then nobody wants to use it. Nobody wants to drive it. It just doesn't get used. And that goes against kind of our principles of the assets we build. We want to make sure that they're used as, as often as possible. So that way we can increase the frequency of their use, but also increase the frequency of on our like, safety products of reaching as many people as we can. Because, you know, let's be honest, over the last couple of years with COVID, um, on the fire safety side of things, we've definitely taking a couple steps back, being able to reach out. And it's definitely been, we've missed uh, plenty of opportunities. So what we're gonna show you guys today with the FIR and some of our other assets is just being able to um, provide assets and resources that allow us to continue moving forward with public safety education and public safety as a whole. So that way we can be mission ready and be operational even when these little hiccups of life and pandemics and natural disasters kind of knock at our door. Um, another kind of interesting vehicle that we have is our incident command, but we do it a little different. All of our vehicles can uh, have the ability to have health safety protocols. This comes in after the, the COVID realm that we live in, but what we mean by that is our, our health safety protocols include one, we build our own UV disinfectant light system. Um, we also have hand washing stations and we have um, easy clean walls and work surfaces. Where most mobile platforms are built with a vinyl or aluminum on the interiors, unfortunately, when we go to use cavasite out in the field, that degrades those materials because of how corrosive it is. So all of our work surfaces are, are FRP or fiberglass reinforced plastic or stainless steel, which allows that I can use cavasite and clean everything when needed. And I don't have to worry about it turning yellow or brittle or just being destroyed over time. Um, other things you'll see on there, we have everything from mass, you know, we're building a command right now that has a PTZ with thermal for both wildland, um, for missing persons, um, just to, you know, if I'm running a, an in accident investigation or long-term incident, it's a, just a nice command and control uh, capability. And one of the other coolest things that we do is our, all of our trailers have a tablet control capability. And this is not an off-the-shelf type of system. This is something we build here in-house at JHB. It's the first 
iPad controlled mobile unit, which allows me that I can deploy the jacks. I can, you know, set, put, turn, turn the, put the awning out, turn the lights on, all that good stuff. But then we go a couple steps further. On our command units or rehabs, we can actually see the camera systems um, around the perimeter. We can control the cameras on the masks for the thermal and the PTZ. Um, but then going some further, it can be viewed anywhere in the world. The whole trailer can be controlled from an iPad or any computer uh, logging into the system from anywhere. So you have a command and control capability from literally anywhere in the world, which is kind of cool. Um, on the fire safety side of things, we have our kind of our pride and joy, which is our fire safety simulator. Now, what's happened over time is we've kind of, when you think about fire safety trailers, right? We all think of that kind of RV looking outdated white box that sat out back behind the station and basically got pulled out for open house once a year and put back till really wasted away 10 or 15 years later. Um, to us, that's why we kind of got into this. It's uh, a matter of being a little bit unacceptable to have these kind of assets not being used because they're too bulky. They, there's too many people needed to set it up. It's just kind of an outdated thinking. So that's why we refer to these as fire safety simulators. Um, with that, you know, right there, that's kind of just changing the perception of what the fire safety simulator is, but also going a couple steps further. First of all, making it an all ages platform. Having it a, a, uh, an asset, a mobile platform that's just designed for elementary school kids, it's really a waste of money. That's a very expensive toy for elementary school kids. So we made sure that it covers kindergarten to college, to senior citizens and everyone in between, which then allows us to have the ability to reach more people, to do more outreach and education and recruitment throughout the uh, entire place. Uh, um, one of the things I'm gonna just mention on our fire safety simulators is the fact that we can, we have a couple different nuances in it. One, ADA accessibility. Now this goes in all of our units, okay? From our rehabs to our commands, to our fire safety units, um, we make sure that there's a level of ADA accessibility. One, it's not necessarily for the person in the wheelchair, you know, the, the firefighter in the wheelchair, okay? But I've been there where I've had a dispatcher in a wheelchair. So on the command side of things, it is necessary, especially if I'm using tax dollars. And I don't want to be on the news for the wrong reason because of something as simple as that. On the fire safety side of things and the educational side, we want to make sure that our assets and our training asset can be used by every person in the community so that way we make sure that that is a capability built into all of it. We go a couple steps further. I mentioned the tablet control, but all of our units have solar charge. They even have the UV disinfectant light systems. Um, you'll notice in the pictures here, we even try to decor the units to the actual agency. So that way the material can relate to the participants. You see, we've got Texas down there. The one in the middle is actually uh, the US Space Force in Colorado. Uh, the one on the right, you'll see some lacrosse sticks. Um, on the bed there, because that's for La Crosse, Wisconsin. So that way, when people walk into it, they have a more sense of a little homey feeling. Um, they have a little bit more sense of, of it's more relatable to them, which means they're more readily available to learn. Um, one other cool thing I will say is we have developed a very unique way to engage kids and adults. And one of the things we realized is, so we said, all right, how do we reach out to the different age groups? How do we engage them to learn? How do they want them to learn? And in today's iPad environment, it's very challenging because let's be honest, we go tech on them. They can build an app on their iPads 10 times better than we can. So we took a step back and one of the main options, most popular options are our units, you'll see on the right picture there, is actually an all ages forcible entry prop. The all ages forcible entry prop, I tell people has nothing to do with fire safety. I'll be the first to admit it. What it does though, it does talk about health and wellness and physical fitness. But we came up with a way to engage people of different age groups by giving them something they can't do at home, give them something related to firefighting, but it's something loud, it's exciting. And once they get a pop open that door, you have them for five or 10 minutes, which is priceless nowadays. And now this isn't made for the truck guys to go take the irons to and, you know, try to be who's the toughest guy. It's designed for, you know, I say the civilian use and, and as a, uh, a simple prop for them, but it's actually one of the most exciting things out there. Um, you'll also notice um, on the left side of that picture, you've got a group of um, junior high kids that are rescuing a victim. We have a firefighter team building tour that goes along with our trailers to make sure that this, the units have um, a capability for not only fire safety education, but also recruitment. And an example is we're building a unit right now for the city of Sacramento out in California. They're going to be using it uh, with their explorers and stuff as a recruitment tool for junior highs and high schools. So now this unit can be used for not only public outreach, but also for recruitment, 
which just makes the uh, the cost uh, a little bit easier, right? But also have a little more um, effectiveness out in the community. So the um, fire safety simulator, the other thing we have a shake, rattle and roll se severe weather problem. <laughs> Now that's just a quick taste of the uh, the severe weather system. It allows um, for the trailer to literally shake, rattle, and roll. It's designed to catch people off guard to spark that conversation for weather emergencies. Uh, the current system includes a severe thunderstorm, tornado, hurricane, or winter weather. Um, our new we have a new version coming out for some of our West Coast departments that will also incorporate or have the option for wildland and for earthquake. Now those aren't weather, but that is nat natural disasters that require preparedness. So those are things that are being integrated into the program. Um, as we move on, one thing I wanted to um, just share with you guys is our VR fire sprinkler demo. It's one of our new mixed reality products. It's pretty cool. Um, and what's cool about it is we've been able to, or in order to show fire sprinklers, okay, and the benefits of fire sprinklers up until now, you pretty much had to have, um, you know, like a side-by-side -side with the live fire. Okay, or you had a trailer that had the uh, sprinkler prop in the back of it, right, with propane and water. And here's the fact, let's be honest, fire sprinkler education is not a youth-based activity, right? It's for new developers, it's for zoning, it's for city council, it is not for youth. So to go to a school and do the prop and stuff, I'm yet to have a kid go home and say, hey, mom and dad, let's take down the walls, put in some copper and some heads and put in some sprinklers. It just doesn't happen. So what we did is we said, all right, how can we show the benefits of fire sprinklers in a fairly simple, okay, easy to use tech way? And we uh, have built that into an Oculus-based platform, which allows then that a user can put on the Oculus and actually then be immersed in four different environments. They can choose from a residential kitchen, a residential bedroom, a commercial office, or an industrial warehouse. Now the fire will evolve around, the, around them. They can see the temperature, they can see the time lapse. Um, and then the system will actually reset in that same scenario and the same occupancy and show it with sprinkler heads in the ceiling and show an activation where, you know, in the temperature difference and, and, and the reduction of, uh, of the fire effects and uh, the improved uh, ability to save life and property. It's a cool, um, innovative way to do it. It's a simple way, but it allows us that we can just take the kit with the Oculus and go into a meeting, go into a classroom, go into the, you know, the village board or whatever, um, and showcase the benefits of fire sprinklers without all the hassle that goes into like a live fire demonstration system, right? Which can only be used in a much more infrequent time. Um, all right, going from the next, the, the next part of it, um, we'll show you this and we'll move on. So um, 
that's a good taste of it, but it's a, it's a cool little system. It's pretty straightforward. What's kind of interesting about our, our units is the fact that um, everything can go with our fire safety simulator, but also it can be purchased separately and used as a foot in the door as you're going through your budgeting process. Or if you get everything bulked together as a fire safety simulator, you're then able to have the VR fire sprinkler demo or the fire that's in front of us um, all be part of it that you can then branch out and be able to use it outside of the, the simulator or the trailer and stuff like that. So what you guys are looking at now is the FIR. The FIR is the world's first augmented reality fire extinguisher training system. What's kind of fascinating about this is there's really only, this was kind of come, we have the, the old Bolex that we've all had, which is the digital board. Um, that's a big giant light bright. Um, there's really no direct comparable to this because the augmented reality technology is what makes a difference. Um, one of the things on augmented reality, okay? Re virtual reality versus augmented reality means virtual reality is a video game. So anytime you're in wearing the goggles, you're watching a video game. So it's the same kitchen, the same environment every single time. Augmented reality, which is what you see here with the FIR, means that we are actually training in any live environment, which means we can create a fire scenario in the real room where the participants and the, and the uh, students are here to learn about. So that way they can build the muscle memory and they can actually learn um, and practice in the real environment. So that way when this happens, right, they have a better fighting chance to, to, to help, okay? Best thing about it is our fire extinguisher training systems before this have always been um, pretty bulky. It usually took a couple cases to set it up. You had to plug it in, whatever it might be. What you're looking at, that is it. It comes with a laser cut Pelican case. It has the 10 pound fire extinguisher and the iPad Pro that marries to it. You guys will notice there is a special bracket that marries these two. Everything that we make is firefighter proof. Okay, I could say that because I am, but that means it's third grade reading level on cranes. So this even is magnetic. It, it fastens on there. We turn on the iPad, we turn on the extinguisher and that's it. So in a matter of 30 seconds, I can have fire extinguisher training going, which means I can increase the frequency and I can just be able to do more in my community more regularly. So there's a couple of ways we can run scenarios through this. So the first thing is we have a quick start. The quick start uses these cool QR codes, okay? Each QR code has a different classification of fire, A, B, C, or K, okay? And what it is, I all I have to do is hit quick start, okay? And I, we have one set up on the green board back here. So I'm going to push this out of the way. I'm gonna grab our extinguisher. All I do is this is ready to go. So now one thing you'll notice too is on the extinguisher, you have shear pins. We use a, a plastic or composite shear pin, which means that if someone forgets to pull the pin and goes to break it, instead of breaking the, the head of this extinguisher, they'll shear the pin. We can put a new one in and we can continue on with their evolution and we're not actually damaging the, uh, the training device. Um, so all I do is I take this, I'm gonna walk up to the QR code that you guys see here. And it automatically knows that I've got a class A fire. This system is going to react now, okay, with a class A fire. So I have a safe distance to be able to move back. Once I'm at a safe distance, this red, um, the orange or red bar, depending on how colorblind you are, does turn on. And I've got a class A fire going wherever I put that QR code. What's great is I can put it on any metal metallic device, throw it on a table, and that fire is gonna keep going. So one thing you guys are gonna to notice too, as I just show you here, you'll look to the screen to our left, okay? We can Chrome or air, AirPlay this to a monitor, to a projector. So in, if I'm in an auditorium or a classroom um, or any facility that has a, a smart TV, I can be showing what's going on. And so this experience becomes much grander um, to the greater, greater participant group, okay? One of the things you'll notice on here, there's two cool things. First of all, it does require in the current setup to choose the type of extinguisher. The system is basically its own instructor. So when I choose the type of extinguisher, I have everything from a water can to an ABC to even purple K, okay? What happens is though, the system will react to the type of extinguisher that I choose. So if I choose a water can, first of all, you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner here, you have the gauge, the gauge shows that it's full. This is going to react just with the same amount of contents as a 10 pound extinguisher. It is, that's how it's programmed. It's not gonna keep going. It's not gonna be short of you. It is as real as it gets. 
The other thing you'll notice over here on the right is the pass. So you have your steps, okay, for the extinguisher use. So when I pull the pin, it's gonna go pass, aim, and I'm now putting out some fire, all right? So as I move back, it's gonna tell me, hey, back away from the fire, which it does. And then it's gonna say, hey, how'd you do? All right, I pulled the pin, I stood safe, I squeeze it, so I did pretty well. The best thing too is in order to increase frequency, in order to reset this, all right, I hit restart, but it's all fireman proof. It actually is telling me, hey, go ahead, put the pin back in and you're ready to roll. So now I can go back and keep getting participants. What I love about this system is the fact that, you know what? They make a mistake, they can do it. And we don't have to relight the fire if it's like we're using propane or if we're using pan fires or even the Bolex. It allows me that I, they can, in a matter of seconds, they can go back and try it again. And they can actually um, learn from their mistakes. Now you can turn off the extinguisher and I'll show you guys the settings, but you can turn off the extinguisher type. So that's quick, that is the quick um, setup as we say it. Now there's another version of this, okay? Which means I can create a scenario. So what I do is if I wanna run a scenario, I can scan any room three-dimensionally. And when I do that, okay, I've already done that here. I take this and I slowly move it around and it will actually 3D map, and you can see the red lines on the screen. You can 3D map this environment where I've already put in a 55 gallon drum with a K fire, okay? You can mix and match to whatever the prop um, type of fire is, but what's fantastic is I can now create props or put props in anywhere in the room. Everything from a 55 gallon drum to a front of a squad car, to a barbecue grill, to a get a trash can to even a 10 foot Christmas tree. And what the great thing about it is now in those different environments, I can relate the material to the actual participants I'm talking about. So if I'm at a industrial warehouse, I can make this a little more industrial like. If I'm in a residential more type of group, a senior home, I can now have the toaster on the countertop. So it allows that. Same thing that's works, it's mapped. I hit this and I'm ready to go with a cave fire. But the number one thing I love about this system I go ahead and choose a water can, which I wouldn't use on a K fire anyways. It's gonna do something that it should. So I'm gonna pull the pin, I'm gonna start spraying it. And you guys are gonna see, well, I made this a lot worse, all right? I made it a lot worse because I chose the wrong extinguisher. So not only, this is not a check the box participant ribbon type of training product, okay? It actually trains. It gives us a reason that, hey, there's a reason why that type of fire extinguisher is in that occupancy. And that way the people can understand and learn the why, which is so key nowadays. So I can restart this and try it again with the right type of extinguisher. But the fact is it will always do that. So if I choose it as a, an electrical fire and I use water, it's gonna arc and spark back in. This K with water made it worse, right? It's kind of fascinating and it's kind of cool. But one of the other things I'll show you, which I love is setting up a system and creating your own scenario, okay? The quick start takes about 30 seconds to get it up and running. In order to create a scenario, all I do is go to create a scenario, okay? I hit scan new environment. I take the extinguisher and slowly move it around, okay? And it's mapping it. Now I can place a token right here, all right? And I can choose from, you guys will see, all these props. And I mentioned a barbecue grill, okay? To a candle, to a garbage can to, let's see even, uh, the front of a squad car. That one's a little big, or a set of tires, okay? So if I go back here now, I can change what that is gonna simulate in terms of the type of fire, so we can leave it as an oil. But what also is cool is you can choose the um, size of the fire, so you can go from weak all the way up to Inferno. And what I like about Inferno is, we'll do that, and I'll usually set that up as my first one, because I'll make it where the fire is so big, that it's gonna overtake them and it's gonna basically fail them right off the bat. And the reason we do that is if we choose Inferno and they're getting, you know, they're, they're going to fight this big blaze, it teaches them, don't go for the extinguisher, go for the door, right? We have this mis, you know, this understanding that people have a tendency to think, oh, if I go get 10 extinguishers, I'll put it out. No, at that point, it's too late. So it just kind of brings it back to them like, hey, there's limitations with these. Understanding the limitations is so key with our training. And uh, 
So here, you guys will see, I've got a giant stack of truck tires in the middle of my office right here. What's great is I can save this, okay? It'll ask me to take a picture. So when I walk into this environment, you know, next week even, or next year, and I can scan this room, okay? What's gonna happen is I can now have this ready to go and I don't have to even go through the setup anymore. It automatically saves it for me. So when I go to run scenario, all right, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna slowly scan this, okay? It knows it, and when I hit ready, I'm ready to rock and roll because I've got my giant set of tires here that are on fire, okay? Um, you'll see the smoke, the tires. Now, what the other cool thing is, this is 3D. So I can walk around the fire, okay? On both the front, backside, all around. I don't have to fight this fire just straight on like this, all right? You guys see the, the airplay in the background, which allows then the guests to kind of see this. Now, going back, I'm not going to go through that, but if I go back to the settings, okay, you can see some of the cool things. So first of all, in the app settings, we talk about this. One, I can change how this fire extinguisher will simulate a five pound, 10 pound, or 20 pound. So you can set that to change and it will react accordingly. I can calibrate this every time on the quick start, which is with those QR codes. You can actually change one, the enable the walk away means when they back up or they put the fire out, you can turn it off or on if you want them to have to back away from the fire. What I love about that is, and we'll show it, when you look away from the fire, it fails. It says, hey, you shouldn't have done that, all right? Don't turn your back on the fire. So again, you can fail users if they get too close to the fire, you know, because it is simulated. They have a tendency to get closer, get closer. This allows them to, you can actually teach them, hey, you shouldn't be getting that close. Um, unlimited tank capacity. That means, hey, we can just have, if it's kids or any group, they can just go ahead and spray until that thing's out. They have the right extinguisher. And you can also remove the extinguisher choice where it's just going to be an ABC and you're just going over the physical aspects of using a fire extinguisher and taking away the, the different types of fire extinguishers in that part of the lesson plan. All right, just real quick, other settings, um, you can change the safe distance. That safe distance from when I can set or start the fire, um, you can make it where there is no safe distance, where I could basically be as close to the fire as possible, or I require them to have to move back five feet, 10 feet, so on and so forth before they actually start this, all right? Um, that's the main gist, okay? I will tell you what I do love about this is just the flexibility and the ease of use. But as I go up here, one thing I do want to show you guys, I come up here, all right, it scans, we're ready to go. And one thing I forgot to mention, so again, ready to go, I choose my extinguisher, I've got an ABC, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and pass, I'm gonna go ahead and put this baby out, all right? But you know what? I did it, but I got it out. But you know what I did? I looked away. And what does it tell me? Hey. Don't look away from the fire. So again, it trains, it teaches, and that's what's so key. So this that's the extent of it. I say that it is probably, um, I, in my opinion, I'll put my fire helmet on and my sales hat off for a second, but um, it's one of the most innovative training tools that I've seen on um, the last 15 years, especially on a tech side of things, because it's something that allows us now that we can go out into any environment and train. So I can go to a commercial kitchen, I can light the grill on fire, put the extinguisher where their extinguisher is located, and they can actually run a real scenario, not out in a parking lot, not in the classroom or the conference room. We can actually do this real world, so that way they can have a fighting chance when this act does happen. Um, one of the other things I'll tell you, so this unit, because of the extinguisher choices and stuff, this unit now becomes a training asset. So not only for community outreach, but now because I can train on different types of extinguishers, right? It allows the ability to now have our on-company training completed as well as public out, you know, outreach, which also means from budgeting and sharing of budgets, there's more purpose behind it, okay? It has more functionality and more capabilities, which then allow us to then be able to justify its cost and justify its use and get it used as often as possible. So with that, an example is the United States Air Force at the DOD Academy down in San Angelo, I just adopted the FIR to do all Air Force firefighter training, um, which means this is not, they're not using it for pub ed, they're using it for on company training. Um, the US Air Force, the US Space Force, the US Navy, I'm um, an example, Dallas Fort Worth Airport, we talk about frequency. Dallas Fort Worth Airport has a couple of these units. Um, I was there with them a couple months ago for training. We had in four hours, we did 
live hands-on training for 300 um, American Airlines employees in four hours, okay? That sheer number of people to go through fire extinguisher training up until now would take us weeks, right? To be able to go through training and stuff. So it's something pretty awesome. Um, but again, it allows us to be able to do more with less. Um, everything you see here, you have the Pelican case, you have the, the extinguisher, the iPad, um, that's it, okay? There is nothing more to it. We talked about the shear pins. One other question that usually comes up is um, costs, okay? There is only one cost for it. Um, we'll send you guys a quote if you guys want that. But more importantly, there are no fees. We don't have update fees. We don't have subscription fees. We don't have anything else that needs to go with it because realistically, that's wrong, okay? If you buy an asset for training and we make an update or we add new props or whatever it might be, that only makes the product better and more usable for training. And we want to include that for you. So there is no reoccurring fees. There's nothing that you have to worry about going forward except using the system as often as possible. All right. Um, we do have a training video online, so we can share that with you guys. It's a training video, not only for the FIR, but also for our fire safety simulator, along with our other commands and health incident units. Um, but if you guys ever need anything, please feel free to reach out. Okay, send us questions. Um, if you guys want to see this, we are going to be, we are going to host some more live demos of some of our other training assets and other uh, innovation um, over the upcoming months. But uh, we just, our, our whole gear here, our whole goal here is to just do things better, right? And a little smarter and uh, just kind of do things we like cool. And this is one of the most cool, you know, the coolest things I've seen in many years. So we appreciate you guys taking the time today. Um, we hope to uh, see you guys again soon. And uh, thank you for uh, taking and joining us. All right. Stay safe.